Was Leo Burke ever the booker for Stampede or the Maritimes? Yeah, he was, uh, I think he was the booker for um, his own promotion. I think they all kind of took turns with that. I think, but I think Leo, um, you know, he was, he was the, probably the best worker and he probably um, ran the dressing room a lot. I think all the Cormiers were, were part of that as a family, but I think Leo was the most experienced and worked in the most territory. So, and I think he was Booker for Emile Dupre for a number of years as well. Um, you know, he's just someone who's relied on the most, you know, had the best ideas, the best finishes. And he was the Booker for Stampede um, 1977, 1978 for one year. And at that time, my dad's promotion was really struggling. Um, we had hit a really low period. Uh, you know, we, we didn't have um, really good talent at the time. Um, and our, our gates had really dropped. You know, we, we were just drawing terribly. And then uh, Leo actually had left the Maritimes after that promotional war uh, with Al Zink, you know, and he came to my dad, you know, and said, uh, you know, I, uh, I want to work for Stampede. And uh, uh, I think I've got some good ideas, you know, and, uh, get, you know, give, give me the opportunity to be your booker. And at that time, my dad didn't really have anybody. Uh, my brother Keith had done it a little bit before that, but he had, um, gone on to school teaching and firefighting. So my dad was actually looking for somebody, um, you know, and, and an experienced wrestler. And I think my dad kind of wanted to take that position out of his uh, son's hands because it put a lot of pressure on his kids and him if business was failing and the gates weren't good and uh, the wrestlers weren't happy, you know, if, if Stu's kids were, were running it. So uh, so my dad, you know, off, offered the position to Leo and uh, – Leo did it just a, a great job. Like he, he um, had business up, you know, in four or five weeks and just everything he did was, uh, uh, was so logical. You know, he, he thought of the undercard guys, you know, and how to uh, keep them up and down. Um, so nobody was a total jobber and, uh, and really just how to get guys over, you know, how to build heels up for uh, the top baby face or vice versa, you know, and uh, um and very unselfish in that role as well. But uh, we, we just did great business. I mean, obviously, Leo was putting himself over on top, but he was over. You know, he was uh, the most established baby face at the time. So, um, so you know, I, I think uh, there, there's nothing unselfish about him being the top guy and, and uh, working programs with all the heels. And, uh, you know, and we, we did great business here. You know, he was selling out with guys like Don Gagne and Michelle Martel, you know, Ricky Martel's uh, older brother um, and, and, and so many others. So, so, you know, our business really came up um, after Leo had been a booker for a year. And, and uh, the other factor too is when Dynamite Kid came in, in the spring of 1978 and he just got over incredibly like you know it's, it's just sort of the injection that the promotion needed you know and sort of that transition from the the heavier slower moving guys uh to the faster light heavyweights and uh, so so you know I, I attributed the turnaround in my dad's business to leo's booking uh to a large extent and uh how well dynamite got over